Hi, and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. This evening, I am joined by Tony Collins and Mark Olson. We, this evening, are going to be discussing very important and interesting topics currently. Let me introduce to you first, Ms. Tanya Collins. Tanya, tell us a little bit about ourselves. Hi, I'm Tanya Collins. I've been here before. And um, I am a parental rights activist and uh, for my daughter, my grandkids, all the kids out there. And um, I also am in real estate and in mortgage. So that's a little bit about me. Great, thanks for being here. And, Thank you. And what brought you to uh, the libertarian side of? Well, you know, when your government is taking away your freedoms as a parent, you're like, wait, hold up. Nope, not gonna allow that to happen. So that's when uh, I switched sides, basically. <laughs> Excellent, and boy, are we blessed to have you. Thank you. And to my left, I have Mark Olson, a total relation. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what brought you to the Libertarian Set? Well, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Mark Olson. <laughs> I am your husband, and um, I do, uh, heating air conditioner refrigeration contractor. So also uh, I have the Olson Foundation that I put together that's uh, making families stronger and educating young men on how to be men, how to take care of things, how to handle uh, situations that come up so they don't have to resort to tools that don't work for them anymore. Great. And yeah. what brought you to the libertarian site? Um, you did. No. <laughs> <laughs> it happened uh, eventually as we saw things as they progressed and how neither party was doing anything right that needed to be done. So, so looking for something else. Fantastic. And we are very blessed to have you, let me tell you. And I am your host, as I said, Pamela Olson. I am also the founder of Save Our Children. I have a background as a nurse, 30 plus years, mental health, 30 years, and a medical educator, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm really old. That's like 90 years. <laughs> so this evening, let's go ahead and start. Uh, there's been a lot of talk, people, about impeachment. The, everyone's got different ideas of what impeachment is and what impeachment isn't. And what our House is doing right now is creating new rules so that they can run a form of impeachment that our country has never seen before in its history. Tanya, let me go to you first. What do you think about this very interesting, if convoluted, and new House rules impeachment that Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff, both California, um, are doing. What, what, what's your opinion on what you're seeing? Well, I'm not really seeing very much action. That, I mean, from, from my point of view, I haven't seen, I think it's all talk. Um, you know, they, I don't really think that they've got a good plan, you know, a plan of action if they're going to try to remove him from the office. I mean, I think they've tried everything to re, and I'm not a fan of either. But I, you know, he hasn't been impeached yet. Let him finish up. We can move on. And, and who's going to take his place? You know, if he, you know, who do we have to take his place at this point? You know, everybody's fighting, you know, the, the Clintons. And, and it's just, there's just everything's like too much, you know, just let it, let him go. And then, you know, we're, we'll, we'll deal with the next one. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's really not just, bad advice, folks. That's very good. Mark, what's your take? Uh, t take on impeachment is it's just a witch hunt. They're just trying to cloud the, the issue before the election comes up, trying to make Trump look like he did something wrong and he got caught doing it. And they just keep running around trying to find something else. The bar report came out, meal report, all that. And, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. They're, they keep trying to uh, show what he did and they're mirroring it, stuff they did. And they're just trying to put it on him. And the whole thing about impeachment is, so you get impeached. It doesn't mean you have to quit being president. Ah, you, very you know, important. You yes. There are several presidents that have been impeached through history, and they just keep doing their job. Nixon bounced out before he got busted. You know, <laughs> I'm not a crook. <laughs> and he got out. But uh, Clinton was impeached. He kept doing his job. Other presidents have been impeached. They just keep doing their job. It doesn't mean anything. It's just, it's like a uh, judicial hand slap. A waste of money. Yeah, waste of time, waste of money. Everybody's yeah. just running around. It just clouds all the election issues. Right. And they're trying to make the president a poison pill so anybody who's next to him doesn't get anything done. No. Let me ask this then, and, and one of you tell me who, who wants to take it. Is it possible that one party is attacking the other party 
by auspice of these new house rules that Adam Schiff set up. And what are those rules? If Adam Schiff says the president cannot have his counsel, then that counsel must leave. That's no due process for a man that is a sitting, duly elected president. That said, with these new House rules and only Democrats being allowed in, we saw Republicans this last week yes. storm. They had to hide the whistleblower and they stopped all proceedings. What do you make of that, Tanya? I don't know. You know, do you want to take this one? I'm kind of. <laughs> well, yes. Okay. We're having, it's a secret <laughs> hearing now. We're having secret hearings behind closed doors where nobody else gets to know what's going on. Republicans are in. It's uh, because of the majority the Democrats have in the House. They can just have their little campfire and hang out and do what their agenda is that they're trying to put forth. And they just keep doing everything wrong. They don't didn't have the votes. Finally got the votes. They it's well, never going to go anywhere. They cry like else. babies and they throw yeah. tantrums. Yes, they cry like babies. They throw tantrums. <laughs> well, let's. The Republicans went down to go get there, remember, right? And they got barred from going in. Right, and they actually stormed. Um, did either of you catch Jim Jordan or Steve Scalise? Uh, both gave very impassioned, very truthful, historical speeches um, after that Republican storming of the democratic castle and quite literally both men not only laid out andrew johnson who was back in the early 1900s i believe or early eight, i'm sorry late 1800s early 1900s <laughs> he was impeached and believe it or not of all people i love that peanut butter commercial amon burr amon burr <laughs> killed who hamilton so quite literally it's hamilton it's my husband's favorite commercial that warned <laughs> Your husband has good taste. It's my favorite too. Uh, not only do they lay out that the impeachment process, which is Article 25, not only lays out basically a handbook and direction for you have a president or someone of power not behaving in a dereliction of duty, which right now we could literally say, Madam Speaker is in dereliction of her duty. Adam Schiff is absolutely in malfeasance of his duty by not following Article 25, mm -hmm. which is why they changed the House rules. Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise, um, both amazing men and very strong. And I can't say that they're big Trump supporters, but they are big constitutional supporters. Got it. So with that constitutional understanding and then bringing this to the American people through the media, does it change your mind in should some rules be allowed to be willy-nilly? No. Why? Well, I mean, we have a constitution for a reason. So, I mean, if we're just going to be, you know, throwing it out the door, it's what we live by. That's, you know, our, our no. thing. If you break a rule, what oh, happens I, to you? Yeah. yeah, I'll get arrested, you know. Get a ticket. Ticket, okay. yeah. So if we have consequences, those that get our vote and state they represent us should also receive consequences. Exactly. So that being said. It's, it's hard to uh, get behind that when they are choosing which laws to enforce, which ones to not. Mm -hmm. You know, we get into the codes and statutes and we get into what's actually law and what's like, hey, this would be a good idea. Let's, let's tell everybody to do this. And it's not really set in stone. It's not part of the Constitution. It's something added on and just threw in there. So it's what we've always done. This is how we do it. And it's just not right. Right. I have to agree with both of you. Right. I, I think those are both excellent. Um, so the Republicans, in the wake of our do-nothing stupor and storm of the Democratic secret impeachment process, um, the Epic Times put out an excellent article, October of 2019, um, where lawmakers of both sides, we actually have a bipartisan effort going on here, folks, lawmakers demanding basic standards be followed. Now, what does that mean? When you're driving, you don't drive without a license. You make sure you go down to DMV, you get your license, mm -hmm. you get checked off, you go in and renew it, your registration in your car, mm -hmm. keeping your car in good order. Okay, These are normal things every American, not just Californians, every American must do or you're going to get a ticket. What are the repercussions or what should the repercussions be for those that are our representatives with our vote? What repercussions should they receive from we the people? Uh, they should be horsewhipped in the public square. 
well, <laughs> there's, there's, sans there's, that. There's, there's no Brilliant. consequences right now. There are no they consequences. They do whatever they, they want, out. and there's no consequences. Right. The consequences don't apply to them. They, they're not backed up. Nothing happens to them. They're not censured. They're not kicked out. They're not, their pay isn't taken away. Right. Nothing like this. They they just keep going. Right. And it's just soundbite after soundbite. Yeah. They're untouchable. They're completely untouchable. And it's like the is always said, if you keep repeating the same lie long enough, people will believe it as the truth. Well, as one of our favorite patriots here at Libertarian Counterpoint, uh, Dr. Lee Welter loves to say, Edward Bernays, the father of propaganda, and our politics have become propaganda. It is nothing more and nothing less than empty rhetoric and propaganda to sell the American people this unconstitutional process is absolutely what needs to be done to get rid of the bad orange man. <laughs> what if this was a president you supported? What if this were Obama? What if this were Clinton? What if this were George Bush Sr.? What if this were Ronald Reagan? I believe the uproar would be much more palpable than what we're feeling today. That said, Lindsey Graham is standing up He's a Republican from South Carolina. Not quite sure how I feel about him. But he has confirmed that he's going to be going to the Senate Judiciary Committee to soon introduce a resolution calling onto the Senate to dismiss the House impeachment. Now, you said there's no repercussions. They should be horsewhipped. You said they can do whatever they want. Would it shock either of you to know that there is an actual constitutional process to stop what Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi are doing? right now, to our president, oh. a duly elected president, I might add. Hmm. Wow, I had no clue. Okay. <laughs> I'm very shocked. <laughs> no, of course, of course. Shock was, and awe here. Of course it was gonna happen. You know, somebody's gonna step up and just stop this show. Well, we'll see how he handles it. And I, I, what happens as we watch, and we start seeing more collusion, more mm. cooperation and more collaboration. Division. What do we do as American people to respond to that? What can we do? What are some of the things that we can do as American citizens to say, you know what? We are not down with this. This is not Vote our government. Them out. Vote, Vote them out. out. Vote them out. What else? Well, I agree with her. But also, you need to um, write your congressman, write your representative. Mm -hmm. You need to. Well, they'd all listen. Well, you need to <clears throat> make yourself. In a perfect world. Make yourself heard. Okay, visit with them. Go see them. Say, hey, how you doing? Yeah. I have some concerns I'd like to talk about. That kind of thing. You know, yeah. it's just, uh, you can tell them that you're there to make a donation. To their oh, cause. there you go. There you go. And Bring donuts. And, you, and you'd like to meet with them and perhaps get a photo op. Okay? <laughs> right. And while you got them and they're sitting there and you're grabbing their hand and shaking it, you know, you say, hey, what are you doing about it? You know, and you can get a hold of them. Because uh, they need to know. They don't hear from their constituents. They're, they're, they're always running around, passing laws and doing things thinking they're representing the community because they think it's what they would do. Right. But they're not talking to anybody. Right. Where's the focus group? Where's your where your, your meeting? Where's the town halls? Right. Right. How, how is the average person supposed to let them know what they want them to do? Right. And that leads us right into our very next topic. Our governor of California, Gavin Newsom, had over a thousand bills presented to him from 2018 up until October. Of one of those, we're talking about law caps on rent hikes. I don't know how many of you have read the SAC B, which is a very nice fluff piece for our governor. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have been. Should have been a bit more honest. There are 829 bills Governor Newsom has signed, and literally not one of them is in the support and upholding of not only our constitutional rights, our state constitutional rights, but our basic rights as human beings. And when you take this rent hike, he is wrapped in the homeless problem along with these rent hikes, which is very much akin, in my opinion, to Obama's, we need to put um, lower individual uh, income class oh right next to our multimillionaires. Any kindergarten teacher can tell you, you put a bunch of seven-year-olds in with a kindergarten teacher with kindergartners, you now have chaos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's not only that; it's the drugs. It's the, you know, um, it's the mental illness. And and then and, and there's nothing wrong with with them, the homeless, you know, living, you know, amongst everyone else. I mean, because they do; they're on the streets. Um, but it's the problem where you know the they need they need help. 
they actually need help more than just housing. So they need housing, but they also need, you know, uh, rehab centers and we need more, you know, mental uh, health uh, places for them to go to, things like that. Um, uh, work, you know, to help uh, find a job, you know, uh, you know, people to monitor them if need be. Um, I know my son is living in an independent living facility and, you know, they, they have a cook there and they make for sure that she runs the house and, you know, everything's great because all the other people with the mental illness, you know, sometimes it can get out of hand. Sure. Um, so it's just something that, you know, we need to come together as, and, and what, what frustrates me even more is, is, you know, Newsom is signing all of these, these bills that really, I mean, they shouldn't even need, I mean, they're going after medical exemptions and all that kind of stuff. And so focusing on, on the real issue, and that is homelessness. Focus on it. I mean, you see it everywhere. Don't, don't you drive through, you know, I'm talking to Newsom, don't you drive through Sacramento and see that they're living on the streets underneath the bypasses? Like, I just don't understand what you're, why you're not doing anything about it. Exactly. So, That's very well, well said. They are doing something about it. And what are they doing, Mark? They're rounding up all the homeless. Who's rounding up the homeless? The police. The police. Yeah. What are the police doing to the homeless? Rounding them up. They are detaining them forcibly. They will not come. Putting them in jail, folks. Ugh. They're putting homeless people in jail. And, unfortunately, most of our homeless are not mentally ill on drugs or on alcohol. Our new class, our lower middle class, have become homeless in favor of that those true. that are not residents of this country. So we have families that are one paycheck away from being yep. homeless. Somebody gets sick, they become homeless. Where is the help for our citizens, Mr. Newsom? Where is your governorship yep. and your conservatorship for your our job. American populace? What about Californians, Mr. Newsom? Not just a specific class of Californians. Shame on you, sir. Shame on you. Yep. Wasn't it uh, Governor Brown, just for Newsom, that was saying that everybody should help a homeless person? Yeah. Right? Because we were all very spoiled. We actually turn on a, a, a light and expect electricity to come through that light switch. No, the, uh, the rent cap that he put on there is uh, rent free, so the rents can't go up. Only by 5%. It's supposed to help the homeless. Right. Well, if they're already homeless, I don't know if you've dealt with the homeless at all. Yeah, my son was homeless. Okay. And yeah. how they get there and then how they get back up out of that, because after somebody is homeless, they are devastated. Right. They have right. nothing. Right. They're broken. They're, they're completely broken. They're broken. Mm -hmm. They've given up. Right. And they are in trouble. Right. And it takes a lot of therapy, a lot of money, right. and a lot of time to get them put back together again. Right. And uh, it's like PTSD. They've got exactly, absolutely, yes. exactly. That's very well said. Yes. And everything they have, they just hang on to. You know, right? They, they want to lose right. it because that's exactly yes. Because yes, it gets taken away so yep. fast. Yep. And the. Here in, here in town, uh, in Folsom, um, there's a Rainbow Bridge where it goes across Rainbow Bridge. Mm -hmm. And as you drive across Rainbow Bridge in the morning, okay, the homeless are camped down in the park down there. Okay? So the police come every day to route them out of there. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay, all the people that are camping down there and they see the police coming and they're so far, they have to go across the bridge, go all the way down to the park. Da, da, da. By the time they get there, the homeless are gone. Wow. They just spent the night there and then they're, they cut out and the police can't follow them down the trails that go past the river of this nature, but they're doing this every single day. Wow. Well, let me make our viewers aware. Crystal Sanchez is an advocate specifically for the homeless. She's here in Northern California, an amazing woman who is doing amazing work. 1,500 homeless disappeared two weeks ago uh, when the fires first began, and we can't find not one. Oh, no. uh, there was a news article that followed up with a news story where Bakersfield police were seen arresting and putting these people in jail. And if they had children, Shameful. they called CPS. Ugh. For every child CPS picks up, it's $5,000 a head. You want to know how California is filling in its judicial federal money that Sessions took away from us? On the backs of the most innocent our elderly, and our children. That's a fact. Please don't trust what I say. Verify it. Um, let's also look, too, about PG&E. Aren't they wonderful? We just oh. love PG&E. Yes. So somebody please out there, 
I'm a nurse and a medical educator in mental health. I know nothing about gas and electric. I just don't. It's not my forte. How is it you turn off PG&E's gas and electricity and fires break out 15 minutes after they turn it off? How good is question. that possible? It's a good question. It's an excellent question, isn't it? Well, yeah. I do know about electricity. There we go. And gas. <laughs> <laughs> and how they operate and how it works and what's going on. And when they shut these things down, there is no reason anything should catch fire. How long should it take for PG&E to clear an area and have everything back on? Because there are still people with rolling blackouts, folks, in our rural areas, especially in Riverside County, Ontario County, Siskiyou County. Uh, people have gone without electricity because PG&E has to come out and recertify all of your electrical and gas wiring before you can have your electricity back on. It takes that long because they cut everything off and there's all these relay stations and all the junctions and breaks and everything. They have to go through and make sure that all these are still okay to be turned back on because they're not normally turned off. They're just on. And so you turn it off and a lot of times it will not turn back on. I see. Because it's been off for so long or there's a, a bad relay or a bad something. So when they do snap it back on, then it does catch fire. Right. And by shutting it off, they're just creating more problems for themselves. Right. So, mm -hmm. Tanya, would it surprise you to know that when this bill was written in July of 2019, all of a sudden, this month, October 2019, Governor Newsom is just as confused so, as oh, you and I are. I'm so surprised. <laughs> just how? like the gas tax. Yes. Oh, my gosh. How did it even get this high? So, now he wants to spend money for a study to figure oh. out how <laughs> these fires are happening. This is just great. I believe the word we're looking for is boondoggle. <laughs> but I, I could be wrong. That's word. just my... I've pretty much lived in California all my life. We, we spent a bit of time in Arizona for a while, and then uh, now we've been in California our entire lives, either Northern California, Southern California. Mm -hmm. We've been in California. And there's always been wildfires. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's always wildfires. Every yeah, year yeah. it's wildfires. The St. Anna's come up, the winds kick up, everything. You're going to have fires. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Okay, I have uh, friends of mine, and uh, his wife is one of the uh, pilots who oh. puts out the fires. Oh, wow. Okay, she's uh, very good at it and uh, been doing it for years. And she's actually seen the fires spark off of the power lines mm. and start. So pg e is totally wow. at fault with this thing. And then the compensation they're offering is 100 bucks per residential customer yeah. and 250 small business. And Newsom went ahead and signed that bill so that pg e could pass on the cost to the customers. Pass right. on the well, savings. Course, yes. To pay for all the lawsuits right. and all the damage and everything. So everybody who's a pg e customer is now paying for the privilege. Right. Well, right. you know what I thought was cool is during the fires and everything, um, my, I got a text message from my phone company saying, oh, we're going to let you have free data for the weekend or whatever because due the, to the, fire, the out, you know, uh, pg e outage and all of that kind of stuff. So sure. that was really cool that a big company, you know, AT&T, would do such a thing. That was very generous of them. Right. They did it twice. Right. Um, so that was great. Uh, but you know, the, it's it's just insanity with with what you know, Gavin's. And then and then Gavin also take took what sixty thousand dollars campaign funds from PG and E. Right. Okay. So. Right. <laughs> well, and he's he's bragging about when he began his term, twenty eighteen, we had a twenty one billion dollars surplus, folks. When was the last time you heard California had a surplus? I believe that would be Reagan. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Don't I'm believe there back. was a real big 21 billion with a B. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Now all of a sudden he's saying, well, we definitely need federal emergency funds. Yeah. In the hundreds of millions, but yet we had a $21 billion Well, surplus. I think we de definitely need more rescue teams. For sure, you know, rescue teams, we need more helicopters, we need whatever it takes. Uh, we need more help because it's gonna happen. The fires are gonna happen. They're, every year. they're still gonna continue. Right. right. Every so, year. Every year, yes. Every year because, so, uh, you know, we need better, uh, you know, resources to help us through that. And uh, our current president does have a point, President Trump. He's talking about California and all these storms with wildfires. They're not going through and clearing these out. They're not clearing the brush out. They're not clearing so these fires light off all the time. And this used to happen. Department of Forestry used to take care of this. I've known several gentlemen who worked for there. It was one of their jobs. They had to go clear all that mm -hmm. out and take care of it. And at one point, they were using uh, prisoners. 
people right. in the prisons. They come out right. and do it, and they love to get outside because they're not stuck in their box right. anymore. They love to get out, they love to do all that, get in the outdoors and do this kind of thing. And then the tree huggers got involved. Tree huggers got involved, and we're like, no, you have to leave that brush there. It's natural, it's all good. But that's what causes the fires. Right. And if you actually manage it, I, when I was growing up, I never had these kind of fires. And I used to go all over the place. And do you notice they're getting hotter and hotter? Hotter and hotter. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Very suspect. Yes. Very suspect. <laughs> so, other than uh, these these bills that that we'll definitely cover on the second show, and please do make sure you keep your eye out for um, the second part of this taping. You will enjoy it, I promise you. And we will go over some of these other bills. But it seems to me in California. It's not just business as usual. They've hit the gas when it comes to the socialistic agenda of the Democratic and do-nothing Republican Party of California. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add as we wrap up this wonderful... As we wrap up this wonderful episode? Yes. Um, hopefully uh, Newsom gets recalled because they're pushing the recall through. Hopefully you people have heard of this and get involved. And uh, try and help a homeless person yourself. Love that. Love that. And Epstein did not kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> As much, I could do a whole show on just Epstein. But with that, Two minutes, yeah. we want to thank you for joining us. If you are at all intrigued by any of these topics, please don't just watch this and then forget about it. Trust but verify, folks, not just your candidates, not just your representatives, not just your board of supervisors, but anything you hear. We hear so much about deep fake news, okay? So, You're off. do catch us on Access Sacramento, channel 17. You can catch us Thursday at 8 p.m., Friday at 12 noon, Saturday 4 a.m., my most favorite, and on YouTube. We'll see you then. Thanks for having us. Good night. Good night. Great.